In reality, in order to make a performance test, you need only three things, three variables. Okay. One is not really a variable because it's a set set pressure. Here we set it at 225. Okay. But it could be 300. It could be 350. But one thing for sure, in order to compare oranges to oranges, it needs to always be the same pressure. All right. One thing, of course, if you set too high of a pressure, let's say you set 450, well, towards the end of the season, that permeate that you are using to do those performance tests will be warmer. All right. And warmer permeate might not permit you to achieve that 450 PSI. If you would look at the water at a microscopic scale, you'd see the molecules of water, right? Uh, water is H2O. It's a molecule of two hydrogen and one oxygen. And the colder the water, and that's right for every fluid, every gas, okay, the colder, the more dense it is. All right? So cold water, the molecules are tightly packed together. Hot water, molecules are looser and looser and looser up into the point it becomes steam and they are so loose that they go up fly individually. So that's what steam is. It's molecules of water, you know, flying individually, not hooking together. Same thing if you take a towel and you take icy cold water and you drop the towel and take it out. It might not be even wet because the water is so tight, the surface tension of the water is so strong that it has trouble even going through a towel. Try imagine an arrow. So that's the idea behind it. So the temperature is really what we need to compensate for. Okay? So you need to figure out a pressure that you can attain from the beginning to the end of the season. Of course, when it's very cold, what, what I always recommend is, okay, it's very cold, you got cold, cold permeate, Try and get the maximum pressure you can out of your RO doing a performance test. Okay? So you a performance test is what? We RO permeate. Just like you would do a concentration cycle, okay, you put your machine on concentration, you start your machine, and you RO permeate. Of course, there's nothing to RO in there. But because there's nothing to RO, the only thing that will change how much permeate can go through the membrane, because it's pure or very close to pure is of course the pressure you push it at the temperature of the set permeate and the falling level the cleanliness of your membrane so from there if we compensate for temperature and the pressure is always the same we can see a difference of permeation through the membrane so that was a pep test is how do we do it okay second factor we talk about temperature um, temperature can be corrected via that chart here. And we're going to talk about that chart a little bit more before we go down to the performance test. I love this chart. I'll tell you exactly why. Because it makes so much sense. You can correlate a lot of things like that with that chart. See, at 13 degrees Celsius, 55.4 Fahrenheit, the correction factor is 1. 1, if you divide any number by 1, well, you end up with the same number, right? So that tells me that it's 100%. 1 is what? Is 1 entity, so it is 100%, right? And 97.973 would be equivalent to 97%. Make sense, right? Everybody follows? Okay, perfect. But it's some kind of a salty, uh, low salty solution. That's what they calibrated with. You know, membrane were designed to, you know, to RO seawater. So I guess that the way that they calibrate it would make sense if it would be salt, right? Membrane, not for, you know, it's not been so long that they were they would start using it in anything else than seawater. So we keep going. So what does that tell me? That at 8 Celsius, I should be 86.6% of permeability of water compared to 13. All right? So when we do a performance factor, what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to, to 
correct the permeation that we noted of our system to bring it back to 13 degrees. So every day we are comparing flows corrected at the same temperature. All right? So whether it would be after a concentration, a concentration cycle or a wash, I got to rinse it cold. So just after a cold rinse, which is on a wash, of course, all right? I'm already fed in, I'm already feeding it in permeate, you know, from the permeate tank. I would just put it in concentration, start the machine. It's already full of water, it's already full of permeate. From there, I will adjust it to a set pressure using the pressure bypass. You can adjust the flow of concentrate to one, but it doesn't really matter, but just in case, always put it to one or 0.5, okay? But always the same. And then you adjust your pressure to the set value that you kind of decided. And I would recommend somewhere around 250 to 350. 350 being high, 250 being low, right? Again, find the most pressure your system can give you in cold and back out 75 to 100 PSI. Make it a square number, write it on the wall. Never forget about that number. So let's say it's 300. So I just started my machine, put it up to 300, fine tuning my 300 using that because that will fine tune your pressure at the same time, bring it to one, retune it, okay, it's 300. Then we wait about 30 seconds just to make sure that the pressure you know, is stabilized, is stable. So about 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds pass, we don't have anything, we don't have time to waste. So the pressure stayed the same. It was already red, so there should not be bubbles, you know, making those uh, those flow meters go up and down. So from there, take a note of temperature. You have that chart of this one. Uh, this one, the simple chart. With you got three lines to fill. Easy, easy, easy. So of course the pressure is always the same. I would recommend you put the date. But again, it's just first time you operate, second time you operate, and so on. So you don't really, really need the date. The pressure, it's always the same, so you don't need it at all. Then you take note of the permeate flow. Let's say we use those numbers. 5.2 gallon a minute on the permeate flow meter, right? From there, I will take note of the temperature. Let's say it was 46.4 Fahrenheit, because this one is in Fahrenheit. So from there, we gotta correct our flow that we took note of, this flow, 5.2, by that temperature. We go to the chart that you are lucky having in the same page this year. Usually was another page, you know, you have to flip back and forth. So you find the temperature and of course, for the sake of the argument, you know, it was 46.4 and there is 46.4 in the chart, right? But let's say it would be 46.3 or four, even better, 45. It's 45, okay. Okay, I got 44.6 and I got 46.4, but I don't have 45. Well, eyeball in between. Got 45, 44.6 is 84.2, 46.4 is 86. Well, 45 should be right around 0.85, right? Simple. So, from there you find the correction factor and you divide the permeate flow by the correction factor. So, 5.2 over 0.866, and when you do that, for the flow, you know, you go to a tenth of the gallon. You eyeball it. Uh, it's four, uh, four and a half, so 4.5, okay? But the correction factor, please use all three digits, because it can accumulate margin of error over time. Over time. Okay, so let's punch some numbers in. So I go, uh, we said 5.2 divided by 0.866. It gives me exactly 6.004. 
Now then we can go back to our one digit, you know. So this would be 6.0, right? If it would have been 6.09, I would have put 6.1. You just round that up, you know, to the first digit. So that is my initial test in the season. When do you do your initial test? That's it. That is your reference point. That is from what you're going to compare throughout the entire season. You do that, of course, the first day you don't have permeate, right? Well, if you have permeate the first day, I don't know where you got it. But you don't have permeate. So the first day you run the RO normally, like you would run it, you know, the first day that you would RO sap, you accumulate permeate. And usually the first the first run, uh, the first run is short. You don't get that much sap the first run. The sap is not so bad, okay? So it won't foul your RO so that you lose a lot of performance, all right? So the first day you RO, you make, let's say, a thousand gallon of permeate. Tank is full, the rest is, you know, overflow. At the end of the day, you would rinse your RO. Typically, you know, there's no you take the sweet out, you do a concentrate flush, you rinse your RO, then you do a regular closed cycle hot wash without soap, right? Because it should not be very dirty, right? So you do a normal closed cycle hot wash, and then you come in in the morning, and you uh, uh, rinse that dirty water out of there, and from there, there we are. We just did our first initial performance test. So it's just flush, start the RO in concentration, concentrate that permeate, take measurement. And I know I'm repeating myself, okay, but I want, it, I want this to sink deep down your feet, so you remember. So once you know that everything, this is your 100%. And very important that you correct it by temperature, I'm going to prove it to you in two minutes. So the next day, say, I see this is March 14, it's not the next day, yeah, but maybe it was frozen solid for three days, you know. Remember, it's the beginning of the season. But you do that every day. So the next day, you do again a regular hot water wash, all right, and you do another performance test in the morning or at night, whenever you see right, you know, but usually you would do your, per some people will do performance tests after, just after they uh, RO, the RO sap, you, know. you can do that. But I, I don't do that because if you do it then, then you need to do another one after the wash, then you need to do another one, okay? It's never ending cycle. So I always do my performance test just after a hot water wash, it's rinsed, and I do it like that. Because if you do your performance test just after you RO, you might see big loss like 15, 17 okay? percent. So you go, oh my god, I need to do a soap wash. Not necessarily. Because sometimes a 15 percent will go back to a 5 percent loss just after a hot water wash. What I want to do is a soap wash when I got 10 to 15 percent loss after a water wash. Okay? So that tell, what does that tell me? I use the soap only when necessary. If you would do a soap wash based on the performance test after you run in sap, you would end up soap washing about every two days. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a really, really big RO for the size of taps that you have. And that it can get dirty before you can show a performance loss. All right? So from there, I do my test every day, and in order to get that sweet correction factor, uh, that sweet uh, um, um, corrected flow and uh, the, the, the percentage of loss, you divide the new number you have, 5.5, by 6 GPM. So just to double check our number, please do 5.5 over 6. Thank you. So I'm going to keep going. Just tell me if that does. That gives you 91.7%. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it would go down like that, okay? And here, at 83%, to me, this is way too deep, okay? We went too far. 
usually they would recommend after 20% loss you do a soap wash. That's what's running around, all right? Um, from experience, 20% uh, loss, but that is after running it in sap, not after a wash, all right? But from experience, if you do that, and most of you guys have a, the right size RO, not an oversized RO, okay? You're gonna hit that almost every day. So it ends up being so almost every day. So that's why I recommend you do that performance test after a hot water wash. So that's why I say 10 to 15, not 20. Because if you're down to 20% loss after your wash, because that's where you do your performance test, you might be too far gone, all right? And why do I say 10 to 15? Let's say this is 91.7. That is almost 9% performance loss, all right? Not so bad, gonna run it. And now I'm down at 88. Not so bad, but I look at the weather. Ooh. It's going to be a long day tomorrow. No freezing until 3 o'clock. And some light rain. No wind. Perfect storm. You're going to get some serious, serious, serious sap. So right now, you got to use that thing that we keep talking about. And you got to judge from yourself. Okay, should I do a soap wash right now? Hmm. No, no, I keep going. Then tomorrow ends up being a big, big, big day. And the next time you do a performance test, you're down 20%. So now that's hard to pick to get back, okay? Same situation, again, use your brain power. Everybody here got a lot of that. We're down toward the end of the season. Still that 88%. You know that tomorrow is not going to be a big day. You know, it's one of the last days that you're going to run that RO. But you know that the sap will be bad. Very, very bad. So now maybe you won't tolerate 15%. Maybe you only tolerate 10% before you do a soap wash. You, that's what I call preemptive strike. All right? You don't let it go bad. You monitor it. You make sure exactly where it sits at all time, and just by your experience and how the season should go, and your prediction that mm, tomorrow, nah, tomorrow, nah, weather is bad tomorrow, it's not going to be a big run, I'm just going to run it and soap wash tomorrow instead. So, the, oh, you just maybe saved a soap wash this season, all right? So that's why, too, I like to wash a lot with water, just hot water, all right? And sometimes I do a hot water wash, I take performance. But nine percent. I do another run like that. Alright? I didn't gain anything. A good run, good hot wash, no gain at all. I know that if I do a soap right now, okay, it will have the most efficiency. Right? I took everything that water could take out. But if you didn't take everything that water could take out, then that goo will kind of dilute your soap, you know, take power off of it. But when you do it like that, you do your performance test after a hot water wash and you go, hmm, I'm down 13%. But this is the morning, right? <coughs> it should be the morning. So you have time to do a quick hot wash with soap from nine, to 11 before you have sap to process. Before you should have sap to process. But you gotta think ahead, you gotta plan. You gotta plan how you're gonna manage your RO. So, I'll go back on that quick quick. When we do performance tests, we RO Burmy. That's what we do. We just apply pressure to Burmy at a set pressure. We take note of temperature and flow and then we use that sweet chart. And if you don't remember, there's explanation how to calculate it in the book. Keep that book, it's very precious. Explanation how to do it in the book. So from there, you're gonna know exactly when you need to do a soap wash. You're never gonna waste soap. You're never gonna, you're not gonna wear down your membrane 
prematurely because you're using soap every day because you don't know otherwise and you're never going to have a limping RO at 70% performance that you will never get back because you're monitoring it. And you're going to end up doing five, six, maybe seven soap wash in a season and have a peak performing RO at all times. It's more than enough if you don't have a lot of permeate or you forgot to fill the tank and now you gotta rinse with that well water, okay? Drain the machine. It's full of soap, drain it. You're gonna need less rinse water to rinse, to rinse the soap out if you drain it prior, okay? So that helps a little. I will give you one good trick. One very, very good trick that was given to me by a maple farmer in Kobe. It's a uh, very nice uh, stain, stainless steel tank made by us. Lucky him. And our tank, the outlet is machined, okay, so it's very precise and straight. And you can put an overflow in our tank. Probably most of you guys that has one of our tanks, I've seen those overflow pipe that we put in. Those are very cheap, right, by the way. Let's say that you get a 500 gallon tank. Right? And you know that you need about half of it to rinse the soap out or do any of your rinse every day. You can put an overflow pipe halfway down the tank. You know, you cut it so let's say it's take up one feet. The minimum, you can eyeball it, the minimum you would need to rinse the soap out of your RO. And when you drop from that tank, you always, always leave that pipe in there. You know, it kind of raises the bottom of the tank. You know what I mean? You understand what I mean? Yeah. Right. So you always draw from the top of the tank, but you can never fully empty it. Never. So one day you're going to go, oh, I'm going to rinse my RO. Oh, no permeate. Oops, I forgot to flip the valve. So I didn't accumulate permeate yesterday. Well, guess what? If you had a tank set up like that, or a tank, you know, I've seen plastic tank with an outlet at the bottom, and then another outlet on top. Okay. So now you feed always from the highest one. So the day that you forgot to fill up your tank, well, you still have a little bit of permeate to do your rinse. That is a safety net. And you know, once you've been working 20 hours straight, going to the cattle, back to the farm, back to kiss your wife, back to the bush, and now you're like, oh my God, you got to start the RO now. You will forget stuff. <laughs> you will. That's for sure. So that's why I recommend hour at night, boil in the morning. Don't hour in the morning and boil at night.